in a message on his website, ultimatewarrior.com. The Ultimate oh, Warrior no! <laughs> wrote that he'd like to wrestle Bill Goldberg in TNA. I'd probably do it. I've always been thinking in the history of our podcast, we haven't talked about the Ultimate Warrior enough. We haven't talked about ultimatewarrior.com ever. And that seems like just a waste of potential. You know? Please check where ultimatewarrior.com goes for me while I read this for Ultimate Warrior. Yeah, I will risk the health and safety of my computer for it. Thank you. Warrior posted, it would be very interesting. What uh, would be more interesting is if TNA execs had the creativity, integrity, and balls <laughs> to entertain it seriously. Frankly, what they should do if they want to be competitive, there's that nasty blood, sweat, and tears word again, is sell some of those construction materials Daddy Jarrett has laying around and put up the <laughs> financing to bring in Goldberg and Ultimate Warrior and let us try to beat the intensity out of one another. Now there's an idea, an attention-getting one, and a money-making one. I mean, instead of always using warrior as the adjective to fallaciously describe all those who aren't, bring a real and oh ultimate God. one in. Let the hardcore natural intensity rip let both of us take our mischaracterized heads halfway out of our asses just enough for us to be businessmen capable of discussing the serious potential yet not enough to diffuse a competitive grudge and let the serious and creative thinkers at tna those without an agenda or envy problem work out a program put your silly ass fear and prejudice for my strong bold character away and think success hell i'm all for great ideas uh, he said hell because that's where he is but i hinted at it wouldn't oh be inexpensive <laughs> goldberg has an agent and has to give him a cut i'm my own and i charge even more the biggest obstacle and definitely the one that has us both the most hated <laughs> in the industry he's keep fucking going is that we are the strong individuals he's, he's cutting a promo <laughs> who don't need or even necessarily want to be in the business. I don't get that impression from this fucking 16 paragraph thing you just wrote there, buddy, is that we <laughs> and can get along having great lives without it. But what a way it would be for the most envied and despised to shove the final word down the throats of those Nor'easterners while TNA capitalizes <laughs> off the incredible heat of it all. I'm fucking sold. Let's do it. <laughs> Where does UltimateWarrior.com go? <laughs> Let's contact Jerry Jarrett, I guess, who we still believe has stake in this company in time to sell off his, uh, sell off his real estate. Yeah, sell the, like, the shell garage you built last month to pay for Ultimate Warrior to wrestle Bill Goldberg. UltimateWarrior.com takes me to stephaniewilton.wixsite.com slash Ultimate Warrior, and it just seems like an Ultimate Warrior website. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure why you'd have a fan page for that man, but sure. I mean, it also has the Total Warriors podcast. Um, I bet that one's been updated recently. Mm. <laughs> oh, it is. It's Dana Warrior. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Dana Warrior and Dana Brooks. The Danas collide. Mm, it's very elegant. Um, yeah, this podcast seems to have six episodes and then never dropped another one. Uh, we would never. No. <laughs> we say on our 500. Um, there seems to be Warrior Weapons. Warrior Weapons yes. of Wisdom, which is art. There's a vault. Mm -hmm. Which has a, some mer It's a very nice website. <laughs> Admiring the design. I can't like I can't like. There's just a page for like people who have like uploaded photos of them dressed up as warrior. There's a store which takes you to his WWE shop, his shop, and as well to signed items. There's a blog takes him to. There's a YouTube link hasn't been updated since 2019. But you know what? It's a solid website. You gotta still make that money off a of warrior. Yeah, gotta drag that fucking corpse around. <laughs> That is enough about Warrior, though. Wild that he never actually showed up in TNA. You would surely thought they would have been desperate enough at some point. I think he probably just always wanted, like, real money, and they didn't always have real money to give. Or they couldn't, like, even, like, delude themselves to thinking he's worth the money he's asking for. No. He probably would have been worth bringing in if you could get him for, like, reasonable pricing. And I gotta admit, he sold me with him and Goldberg being the piss out of each other for real. I know that, like, they did come back to the thought of, like, doing something with him and Sting again, either against each other or as a team. But, yeah, he, he would have wanted an insane amount of money, so. He's nope. an insane person. <laughs> hmm. Kevin Nash is scheduled to return in time for TNA's move to prime time. One major former pay-per-view main event wrestler called TNA to express interest in working for the company, but TNA made it clear that they want any major names who come in to not just be looking for a payday, but also be willing to help give a boost to TNA's lesser established wrestlers who are in it for the long haul. That's fucking bullshit. <laughs> who is taking these calls? This is not <laughs> true. 
Whoever fed that to PW Torch, full of shit. But also, that's exactly what they should be doing, so maybe that mindset should be permeated a bit more. It, it would be like classic TNA that everyone believes that, but nobody actually does it. Yeah. There are now feasible scenarios out there for the five biggest names of the Monday Night Wars. You are not working for WWE right now, other than Hulk Hogan to be brought in to either wrestle or make appearances. But at this point, most scenarios are long shots. Four of the big free agent names have all expressed disgust with WWE's approach to recent situations, including the death of Eddie Guerrero and the treatment of Jim Ross, and have cited it as one of the major reasons they'd potentially be interested in tilting the scale toward TNA as much as possible to create a more level playing field it's just generous Shut altruism Liam. you're all fake you're all fake <laughs> none of you believe any of this you're just saying it at least two of those top names are watching tna regularly and like what they see and seem to be scouting where they might fit because this yeah, is the right. month where there, like there's a lot of goldberg notes like that i didn't really include but most because because he doesn't end up showing up so it's like there's not much point being like they're 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 edging toward goldberg but like this is probably the month they seem to come closest to actually doing something with goldberg like like yeah. so much so that he is actually name dropped on the pay-per-view but obviously it just it and just the crowd seems to think that he's coming yeah, because because in the main event segment of Destination X, when uh, Sting is getting beaten down, they start chanting Goldberg. So there there, there is the assumption that so, like uh, something's happening with Big Bill. Big Bill, he doesn't come until way later. <laughs> Not until twenty twenty one. Then we can give um, TNA their flowers for helping. His... Yeah, he goes into that Macklin territory where again, if you would ask a hundred wrestling fans, should Big Cass get a second shot in TNA? The vast majority of them would have said no, and then they did, and he rocked. And now he's in AEW and he still rocks. He had, um, yeah, and then AEW gets all the credit. Mm. <laughs> Same people who rolled their eyes at Big Bill main eventing pay-per-views in TNA is suddenly like, Big Bill's the best wrestler, I love him. Fucking disingenuous. I, I, would, I would never. <laughs> Brock Lesnar is not negotiating with TNA, but an intermediary is communicating between the two parties about a potential agreement should Lesnar get contractually free from his WWE legal mess soon. Are you excited? Like, this like little stretch we've done here is, is like, the again, what we were talking about earlier where it's like it begins you know <laughs> we're like not all these people come in but like we've done this stretch and there's a couple more we'll talk about even before we're done with the notes for the month or that like you know Goldberg and Steiner does come in and Lesnar and Nash is coming back and Ultimate Warrior is angling for something you know it's it's just like it it's just it just begins you know this is it begins again hmm Apollo is gone from TNA after missing his second consecutive pay-per-view match. His profile has been removed from TNAWrestling.com. I love how that's become the shorthand for now 20-odd years about how a wrestler has gone from the company's, like, profile gone from the roster page. And then the, to the fact where it's now become part of the work. Yeah, where it's a bit to take the person off the roster page in order to sell the story. Yeah, which then in turn makes it no longer believable. So it's a whole mess. It must have been much more confusing before the internet, where like, if you weren't reading the sheets, there wasn't like a list of people who wrestled for like WCW. So if like Dustin Rhodes left WCW, you'd like, you'd just be like, where'd Dustin Rhodes go? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, like, obviously, he'd eventually show up in the WWF and he'd be like, oh, that's where he's gone. But, like, there wouldn't be a signifier at all. He'd just disappear off TV. Like, the wrestlers you like could just disappear and you had would have no way of finding out, like, is he gone from the thing I like? Uh, we do live in a, again, part of the whole, like, everything is a lot more easy to see now. Mm. Apollo is no longer going to be used, although he may not have been told that he's fired. <laughs> They're just like, fuck him. He had calls trying to keep from being fired, but in his case, there is no sympathy at all for missing two straight pay-per-view shows. It was never an issue about jobbing, although Apollo doesn't like to do like the job, as he didn't even know the match finished. He you know showed, so it wasn't like he's like I'm losing, I'm not showing up. It's just regular no showing. He didn't want to go. <laughs> it's pretty interesting that 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 is just the thing, mm. like in wrestling, where people are just like I'm just not gonna go. Yeah, because we were about to talk like Sean Waltman isn't going to be used, and like he might be going to Wrestling Society X anyway. Jeff Hardy isn't going to be. be used anymore. <laughs> like th there was talk of bringing Jeff back again for the the primetime runs, but they're like oh. I guess we can't. <laughs> It's so like they really just. I mean, I get it with Jeff at least. I mean, mm. I don't know. They just. They really just. They want anything and anyone. You like they make bad decisions, but like it's almost like can I blame you? <laughs> If you were if you were to like we we don't have these stats for 2006 because that this is actually the month TNA launched their YouTube channel. There's a fun fact: uh, February March 2006. Where is it? The I think video, like, there was... the YouTube channel is much better now, though. <laughs> Thank you. And I think that um, anyone who is involved in that should get big raises. <laughs> 
<laughs> the um one of the first videos was actually the first video was the ultimate x feature there was a couple ultimate x features this month that was the first video in the history of tna's youtube channel and the second was the ron killings what's up music video that's kind of odd those were the first two videos on tna's youtube this month in 2006 when youtube was but a, like a, a wee thing now look at it creating yeah jake polls and such but like uh, to, to go back to, to my point, like if, if you were to post an AMW YouTube match in 2006 or a Jeff Hardy one, the Jeff Hardy one would do much better. Like that's just yeah. the reality of the situation, which is the reason everyone's always like Jeff Hardy. It, yeah, I suppose like there is an, an element of with a, a YouTube, right? Mm. Um, this obviously isn't as much relevant now, but something relevant coming up is that it's for the first time, it's like instant feedback on a global level of who is garnering the most attention. Yeah, because you used to only have like minute by minute ratings, and now you have this thing that says like Jeff Hardy clip does X, AMW clip does Y, you know, Gail Kim clip does Z, Jeff Jarrett clip does. And it's B, not just people watching the TV; yeah. it's everyone. It's just it's interesting, and it, it's the beginning of like no longer directly needing a Spike TV or a pay per view carrier to start distributing your content. You now have like access to direct people. You can cut out the middleman of the the broadcaster. That, that's an interesting interesting part about um creating i know hit word content in mm -hmm. general now is that the you have we're in this we're in a state now where you don't need as much backing as ever there are multiple pro wrestling companies now which are all of their way of distributing their their pr promotion and their shows is all online through their own mediums whether it be through a patreon their own ott service or their or youtube there's multiple mm. companies now that that are just doing that and it's just and that's a, a larger, sorry, a smaller symptom of a, a larger shift in how people produce content now. Yeah, and arguably too much stuff is available now, not just in terms of more stuff than people can watch, but like a young wrestler who's 19, it's both cool that everything they ever do makes tape, but like you mm. deserve to stay in the shadows for a while. It was like the thing from the Maxine Dupree thing is like that woman should not be on television. <laughs> she should not be in front of people. She should be working at the smallest indie she can find that don't make tape. But the problem is, there's actually very few stuff that doesn't make tape anymore. It's almost like the exception now that something doesn't make tape. So that, like, there's a spotlight on everybody now immediately the second you start wrestling. Yeah, it's which crazy. might not be healthy. It's probably not. Well, it's the same thing as, like, you know, uh, people have grown up on the internet now and it's like, your baby brain thoughts from when you were 14 are on the internet <laughs> somewhere. It's the same. It happens every year with, like, the NBA draft where, like, somebody gets drafted. And, like, it's not always, like, cancelable stuff it's just like their bad review of avatar from 2011 is just sitting there in their twitter yeah feed. like like someone will get drafted into like the nfl and they'll go back to their tweets and it'll be like 2009 i want to fuck one of the avatars <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like yeah all right fair go off king or like we saw it with solo sokoa who like got bullied off twitter because he had like 5,000 tweets that were like i hate math <laughs> Really? How did I miss and that? He had like, yeah, he literally had like 15 tweets that were all different variants of how much he hates math, and people kept retweeting him, and then he just deleted like his Twitter. Aww. <laughs> But it was really, but like, it wasn't like embarrassing. I, I don't, I, it was just funny that this guy was like, man, I hate math so much. Yeah. It's just, like, you just see the glimpse into when you were a normal person as opposed to being a star, which is quite charming. I want to see if I can find some of these math tweets. They're re like, it's, it's really not like embarrassing. Yeah, here we go. It's just like, fuck math. Um, like <laughs> breathing emoji. History and math. Damn shit. I hate math. Hate math. <laughs> exclamation point. Exclamation point. I hate math. Blowing out of the nose emoji, angry emoji. <laughs> this man did not have a good time in school. Yeah, he just has like six tweets that say fuck math and people kept retweeting him. And they're all from 2013. Mm. God, that's not long enough ago for him to have hating math. That does upset me, I don't like that. When Roman was first debuting. He was just tweeting about how much math is fucking him over. I want to see, how old was Solo Sokoa 13 years ago? So he was 17. Because mm. he is 30 now. They should push that guy. <laughs> Unrelated. I suppose he's in the, involved in the biggest thing in the world for like. But also, he never wins his matches. So he beat John Cena. And he, I don't think he's won a singles match since. I don't think he, has he had many since. I don't know. Uh, Sean Waltman was meant to be planned for a, a spot in the James Gang LAX feud, but that is no longer happening because he may be signed with WSX anyway. Oh, uh, was he going to be the third man in the James Gang? Well, it worked out better if he was, because fucking Bob Armstrong's the coolest. I was going to say, well, I don't think he was going to be an LAX. That would be cooler, though. <laughs> it 
word. Homicide and Sean White, Sean Waltman and Conan. Yeah, that's a, that's a stable right there. And Machete. He's definitely going to be hanging around. I, I'm a massive fan. I would hate for him to go. 